Blackened beef ribs is something that you won't find anywhere else. This is one of those things that Louisianas do. We understand everybody else do what they do with their beef ribs, but we gotta put our own little twang on it. And blackening is exactly what we're gonna do. Yes, we're gonna achieve a nice bark, we're gonna achieve a nice meaty flavor, but most importantly, with that juicy beefy rib, we're gonna have that beautiful blackened Cajun seasoning that has penetrated this beef rib for hours. So let's make our homemade blackening seasoning. We're gonna take some salt, paprika, some of that cayenne, some onion powder, garlic powder, white pepper, black pepper, some dried thyme, and some dried oregano. You might call it oregano. And then we're just gonna whisk that on together if you want to be super fancy, you can put this into a food blender and pulse it until it gets nice and even. But all you need is a bowl and a whisk. Now that this is good and blended, I'm going to take out two teaspoons for our whiskey barbecue sauce. So maybe, maybe a little bit more. All right. Now that this is nice and ready, look at that. All of this beautiful season. All right. Now it's time to rub down our meat. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean off the silver skin. Now, it all depends on how you get down. You can clean it or you don't have to clean it. But since I'm classically trained and I see this silver skin right here, which will get into your teeth and you will also need some toothpicks after you finish, all right? So the main thing is you just wanna get right underneath it. You don't wanna get too much of that silver skin with meat mixture, okay? You don't want that issue. And so, I'm just gonna go ahead on and cut that on out. And unfortunately, this beautiful piece of fat that was right there is nothing but silver skin. So now we're just gonna clean off this last little piece of silver skin. And get it all up and out. Now let's get to seasoning. So I'm gonna flip them over and I'm gonna season the back of the bones liberally. Like, if you think it's enough seasoning, put more. And this beautiful blackening seasoning is going to do work, okay? You want to season the bone. We're not eating the bones, but we want every part of this to be nice and rubbed down, all right? So now we're going to flip them back over. And in true blackening fashion, we have some melted butter here. And what we're going to do is we're going to brush this big old beef rib with some butter so that this fat can hold our seasoning and lock it in as it cooks low and slow for eternity. Blackening happens to confuse a lot of people, but I would say there's three main things that they always need to keep in mind. You need some type of fat, whether it's butter or oil, you need the seasoning and you need high heat. Now, obviously with these beef ribs, we're not gonna sear them first and then we're gonna cook them over a 500 degree oven. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush them down with some melted butter, then we're gonna coat it with our homemade blackening seasoning, and then we're gonna let these things cook low and slow. And since beef, as it cooks, it gets browner, we're gonna create this blackening profile over time, and that's how we're gonna make this a blackened beef rib. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit out at room temperature. We're gonna cover it for one hour and let it marinate. And while this is doing what it do, we're gonna go ahead on and get our smoker smoking in our grill. Traditionally, when you get smoked ribs, people think you have to smoke it for five to six to eight hours. But the real impact of the smoke flavor happens within the first 30 to 45 minutes. So that's why we're only gonna smoke these ribs for about 45 minutes. I'm gonna pull off the box so it doesn't have to interact with it anymore. Or you can kind of just get hella lazy and just let it just sit there. You do not have to refresh your smoke wood because all of that smoky flavor that we're looking for is gonna immediately impact it within the first hour. I've started a base of some paper towels with a little bit of oil on it to help jumpstart this fire. Hickory, 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 hickory. Do not be an amateur and use mesquite. And now we're just gonna go ahead on and get this lit to help jumpstart this fire. And I'm also gonna cut my burner on 
to medium high to even help it both ways, all right? We're not gonna depend on one fire. We're gonna trust two fires. Now you can see we got a good fire going. Now all I'm gonna do is just close this lid, cover my grill, and let it get up to 300 degrees. You can see our smoker is going. I went on ahead and threw in some wood chunks just to even out the wood chips. And now I'm putting these ribs on an indirect heat with the large bone closest to the heat. And now we're gonna go ahead on and close this for four hours. We want our temperature to be between 275 and 300 for four hours. We're gonna pull off that wood box within the first hour and then let that thing keep going low and slow. Now it's time to make our whiskey barbecue sauce. So we're gonna go ahead on and get our ketchup. Now look, I don't know who was raised and taught y'all to make barbecue sauce with tomato sauce, but today that stops, all right? You want that ketchup to add that nice, thick, rich base, all right? All of it. Then we're gonna add some Worcestershire sauce. I love adding this Worcestershire because it just gives it a nice umami flavor to go along with our meats that we're cooking with. Then a little bit of vinegar, balance. That's what you want. We got sweet, we got a little bit of umami. Now we got a little, little tart. Now we're gonna also add the star of the show, whiskey. Don't worry, I had my shot before we started filming. And then you always have to have a little bit of sweetness. Today we're gonna go ahead on, cause I'm a Louisiana boy, and add some beautiful sugar cane syrup. Feel free if you can't find sugar cane syrup to just use a little honey or agave. Give it a nice little whisk. Cut your heat on high, and we're gonna bring this up to a full boil, and then we're gonna simmer it for about 20 minutes and let it get nice and thick. Classically, you will find brown sugar or sugar, honey or agave in your barbecue sauce. But here in Louisiana, since we're a sugar cane producing country, we love to put our sugar cane syrup wherever we can. So I thought it would be a great pairing to use the sugar cane syrup with that natural caramelization that happens as they burn the sugar cane to pair very well with the oak flavor that you'll get from your whiskey. So our sauce has reduced. You can see the lines on the outside. And look at how thick this is. Mm, mm, mm. Let's give it a little taste. Don't burn mouth on camera. Mm. Nice, sweet, smoky. And you get a little back tang just from that Worcestershire sauce and that whiskey playing friends together. This is gonna be phenomenal on top of our ribs. So it's been about four hours since our beef ribs have been cooking and look at how beautiful they look. The first thing I notice is how nice and brown that this back end is getting. I see that the meat is pulling away from the bones, but I can also see how we have this little pullage on the side. So what I'm gonna do is just when I see that, I'm just gonna rotate these right fast. Very important key. For this recipe here, we're using beef short plate ribs. We're not using those little bony ribs that you'll find in your local grocery store. You have to ask your butcher for these because he has the secret on these beef short plate ribs. That is the kind that look like Fred Flintstone would appreciate. That's the kind we're using in this recipe here. We can see our box starting to farm. I'm gonna cover the lid and close this for another two hours and let it cook. Check it and see how beautiful our bark is and check and see if these beef ribs are ready for serving. So it's been the last two hours and look at how pretty that is. I wish y'all had smell of vision. Now I have a little knife and I'm gonna poke right by the meat closest to the bone. And you see how easy it inserts? That's what we're looking for. That's a good sign that these ribs are ready to go in your belly. Well, the time has come to see if I made Fred Flintstone nice and happy. Let's break this bad boy off the bone.
And all you want to do is just cut right along that bone. And it should cut just like butter. Look at that. Nice, juicy, fatty. I can remember like it was yesterday, the very first dish that I ever made. It was kind of a, a Russian roulette type of situation. Our chef instructor said, pick out a recipe, cook it at your own will, and then we'll all do a taste test and as a group. Now I grabbed the one recipe that seemed familiar, but I had no idea what I was doing. And it was at that moment that I realized which chefs really understand a quiet room is a pleasing room. It's almost like a silent um, standing ovation. Because if you can silent a room full of teenagers, who's tasting your food and everybody gets quiet, you're really doing a great, remarkable job. And now, even as I cook now, that's what I'm looking for. I still want people to enjoy the whole experience, but if I know after that first and second bite, the room went from uh, clamoring, everybody having a conversation, presenting the dish, and then they try, and then everybody got, kind of get that, damn, you taste that too? Yeah, you taste that too? Yeah. That's, that's when I know I got a good job, you know, and I actually call that deliciousness. You know, when you shout it to everybody, that's delicious. Mm-hmm. 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 Nice and tender, beautiful bulk on it, good and juicy, well-cooked meat, and the sauce just brings all of those flavors together. We got a winner right here. Mm -hmm. But don't take my word for it. Follow this recipe and do it yourself. See y'all later.